Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. I had a request for reviewing some big geometry ideas on the Praxis exam for middle school in mathematics. So I was going to go over just some general geometry ideas um, that are probably good for any standard math test, aptitude test, placement exam. Uh, and I'm going to split it into three categories, triangles, circles, and four-sided figures, quadrilaterals. I'm going to start with circles. So all the way around the outside of a circle is called the circumference. And circumference is equal to 2 times the number pi times the radius. And then in every circle will have a center. From the center out is your radius. All the way across the circle at any point is a diameter, either lowercase or capital D. Uh, around the outside is a total of 360 degrees. This right here piece of the circle is called an arc, A-R-C, and this right here is called a chord. So that's C-H-O-R-D, so that's a chord. Sometimes you'll see the notation, let's say a C right there, and you'll say circle centered at point C. So that's identifying that the center as a point C. So if the circumference, the length all the way around the outside is 2 pi r, and let's say r is equal to 6 inches, then the circumference, the distance around the outside, if this is 6 inches, is 2 times pi times r, 6 inches. And your circumference would be 2 times 6, 12 times pi. If I leave this number in terms of pi, then it's considered an exact value versus an approximate value. If I enter the numeric equivalent of pi, 3.14 in my calculator, and multiply that by 12, I get 37 or 38 or something like that. That would be the exact same circumference, but it would be the approximate solution. You almost always want to leave your answers in exact value in pi form. Okay, so that's the length of the outside, but the measure of the outside is 360 degrees. So the measure of an angle is going to be in degrees versus the length of, say, an arc, AB, will be in inches or feet, a linear measurement. So let me create another slice of pie out of here. We'll call this point A, point B, and this is point C. Let's say this interior angle here is 45 degrees. So that interior angle is 45 degrees. So the measure of arc AB, the measure of angle AB is 45 degrees. And also the measure of that arc, measure of arc AB is equivalent to the interior angle that it contains. So the measure of arc AB is also 45 degrees. Okay, if I want to find the length of arc AB, I want to take the length of all the way around and multiply by the fraction of what I want over the total. So the length of arc AB is equal to the circumference, 12 pi, that's the length all the way around, times the fraction of what I want, 45, over the total of 360. Those are degrees, degrees cancel. I could reduce this fraction. 45 goes into here once. 45 goes into here eight times. Is that right? Yeah, eight times. So that redu fraction is reduced to one eighth. And then I could see four goes into here twice and four goes into here three times. So the exact value answer would be 3 pi, and my units are inches. So it's a big idea, the difference between a measure and a length. Measure is going to be degrees. Length is going to be whatever units um, you're working in. Okay, so that's just a little bit about a circle. Let me go over a few more ideas on a circle. So that unit circle is a big part of trigonometry. It's kind of how triangles and circles connect. You could draw a unit circle on a Cartesian coordinate system where the horizontal axis is x, the vertical axis is y, and then a unit circle means one unit, so it would have a radius of one, and you could rotate around 
You could rotate an eighth of the way to 45 degrees or a quarter of the way to 90 degrees, 135 degrees, 180 degrees, 225, 270, 315, and back to zero or 360. And how this all connects to triangles is that um, you could actually create a reference triangle in this unit circle. So wherever you rotate to and stop, you could drop a vertical down and it'll create a specific triangle. And there are a bunch of exact value triangles, but they will always have a 30, 60, 45 reference angle. Part of the reason why the, the circle split into 360 is it is divisible by 8, it's divisible by 4, it's divisible by 12, it's divisible by 6, divisible by 15. So you, so it's really usable. And it's also very similar to the number of days in the year. So it's really good for navigation and traveling the sun or the sun's travel. Okay, so I rotate around a 45 degrees. It gives me a reference triangle of 45. If this angle is 90 and this one's 45, this one's also 45. And that gives us our first triangle called an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles part of isosceles right means that this and this are the same measure. The length of the side is dependent on the measure of the angle. So if that angle is 45 degrees and that angle is 45 degrees, that means it's the same angles, so the same sides opposite those angles. So it's isosceles and then right because that's a 90 degree angle. Um, I could find the hypotenuse here by using the Pythagorean theorem. I could go 1 squared plus the other leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. So I have 1 squared 1 plus 1 squared 1 equals c squared. 1 plus 1 is 2 equals c squared. Solving for c, I take the square root of both sides. Square root and square cancel, and c is equal to the square root of 2. Square root is really saying what times itself will equal to. So root 2 times root 2 will equal 2. There's actually negative root 2 times negative root 2 will also work. So there are two solutions here. But you discard the negative one because you're talking about the length of a side. So this side here is root 2. Okay. So this is a triangle that most people know. It's an introduction into trigonometry. It's, a, it's used all the time in construction and building things of any type. A couple other little pieces I'll just mention. A capital letter is used for the measure of an angle. A lowercase letter, the same letter, is the length of side opposite that given angle. So if this is angle A, this is side A. If this is angle B, this is side B. If this is angle C, this is lowercase c. So that's our first triangle, isosceles right. Our second triangle is a 30, 60, 90. And it actually goes back to this unit circle here. All right, so on that unit circle, instead of splitting it into eights, I split it into um, six. All right, so here's my unit circle. My first angle would be 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 180 degrees, 240, and 300. So those would give me my 60 degree angles. And then these two angles are complementary. Complementary is they add up to 90 versus supplementary they add to 180. So supplementary are angles that add to 180. I remember that C comes before S, just like 90 comes before 180. So I have that triangle right there. I'll redraw it out here. This is a right angle. This is 60 degrees. This angle is its complement, 30 degrees, because 30 plus 60 is 90. All three angles in a triangle always have to add up to 180. And then this triangle as well is when you just need to know the ratios of sides. Side opposite 30 would be 1. Side opposite 60 would be root 3. 1 squared plus root 3 squared equals c squared. 1 plus 3 equals c squared. C, is equal, c squared is equal to 4. Square root of both sides 
c is equal to plus or minus 2, and I discard the negative, so that's 2. That ratio will always be the same in any 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if this right here were um, x, this would be x root 3, this would be 2x. If this was 17, this would be 17 root 3, this would be 2 times 17, or 34. So again, the two triangles you have to know are 30, 60, 90, and it doesn't matter which way you draw it. If the 30 is down here, the side opposite 30 is 1. The other angle is 60. The complement, side opposite 60 is root 3. Hypotenuse is 2. Second triangle is isosceles right, where the legs are the same, 1, 1. Angles are the same, 45, 45, and the hypotenuse is root 2. So that's a quick overview of circles and triangles. And then the last thing I'll just talk about are quadrilaterals. Quad meaning four, lat being side. So a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral. If these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel, usually denoted with arrows and double arrows, it is a parallelogram. Two sets of parallel sides. So it could be like this as a parallelogram. If these angles are right, then all angles have to be right, and then that parallelogram becomes a rectangle. If all four sides are congruent, so usually tick marks to say congruent, arrow marks to say parallel, if all four sides are congruent, that parallelogram becomes a rectangle, all sides congruent, now it becomes a square. Um, oh, let me see one other thing too on circles triangles and quadrilaterals for area. Area is the amount inside the shape. Area of any quadrilateral is base times height, and that's going to be the area, and that's for a four-sided figure. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height, and it doesn't matter if it's right, obtuse, 30, 60, 90, all triangles, the area will be one-half base times height. An area of a circle is pi r squared. So that same circle I started with, right? So if I start with this right here, this circle here, the circumference all the way around is 2 pi r, but the area is pi r squared. Area is the amount of paint it would take to paint the whole inside versus circumference is the length of string to go around the outside. Area is going to be a square unit, and that's how I remember that. So area of this circle with the radius of 6, I square that 6 first to get 36, and then I multiply it by pi. So if my radius is 6, squared times pi is 36. 36 pi square inches. Don't forget your units, and they're squared for this area. Okay, I was going to say just a couple more things about quadrilaterals. Um, one common quadrilateral is a trapezoid. And in a trapezoid, you have two parallel sides. Um, and it's a four-sided figure. You can have an isosceles trapezoid where this side would be congruent to this. Um, but it, they don't have to be congruent. It, that's just an isosceles trapezoid. A really common problem you see is a trapezoid like this, where the base triangles are one of the two triangles, either an isosceles right, right, 45, 45, and then that way you could break it into pieces, or sometimes this base angle is a 30 or a 60. So in standardized math tests, they really go towards those exact value problems, and part of the reason why knowing a 30, 60, 90 in isosceles right or so important is the answers will be exact values. They'll either be in terms of pi or square roots, like square root of 2, um, not the calculator approximation of them. The area of this trapezoid is still the bases times the height, but here you have different bases, so you have to average the bases. So we'll call this base 1, and as an example, we'll call it, actually let me make it base 1 that way, Base 1 is equal to 10. Base 2 is equal to 6. 
say. To find the median from the middle to the middle, I average the two bases. So the median is base 1 plus base 2, 10 plus 6, divided by 2, which is 16 divided by 2, or 8. So this median is 8. And then I take that 8 and I multiply it by the height. Let's say the height is, no, the height can't be 5. Let's say the height is um, 2. So I take it, the median, the average of the bases, times the height of 2 to get an area of that isosceles trapezoid of 16. If we're talking inches, that would be square inches. If we were talking centimeters, it would be square centimeters. Okay, I know it's a ton of information and it's a quick overview, um, but those are just some big ideas. Hopefully you learned this before and this is a review because this video is certainly too short um, and non-comprehensive to explain all the ideas. It's just a quick refresher of geometry. A good way to split geometry, and all three of these are really separate courses of study, is in the triangles. The study of triangles is trigonometry. Circles, there's so many fascinating parts of circles you could work with. Polygons, which is many-sided figures, specifically one polygon is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. Okay, well, this is Colfax Math. Um, I'm hoping this will be a quick review of geometry. It was answering a question on the praxis um, math portion for middle school. Uh, math is really cool, especially when you understand how all the pieces go together, and I'm hoping this helped. If you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe and the bell for notifications. If you like this channel, hit like, and I'd like to hear your comments below, especially how the test went, or if you had any other questions on that. I will say I've been teaching high school math and woodshop for over 20 years, uh, and it's the most rewarding career. I mean, I love it. I love teaching, and I love teaching math because it's so applicable, and it's so cool how all the pieces come together. So thank you for watching.